What is going on, everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me today. What we're going to talk about is Azure, how to use Azure and how to interact with Azure. However, there's a twist. So we are going to be looking at how to use Azure, but we're also going to be looking at how to use Azure specifically with Go, with a programming language. Now, when you think about Go, you might think about, you know, specific tooling and Go is, you know, a niche where it's, you know, you got to be doing something crazy like creating Terraform or Docker or Kubernetes or something. These are all platforms and tools that are created by Go. That's not the case at all. You can use Go for automation and for cloud development and for scripting very simply, I mean, it, you really don't need a lot of code. To be honest with you, you probably need less code to do it in Go than in Python, for example. Now, I know Python and PowerShell are typically the choice when it comes to Azure, but I'm here to show you that with a little bit of code and a little bit of learning, if you don't know Go, you can simply automate a lot of the different processes in Azure, things that you may be doing today that might be not really that fun. And that's actually what we're gonna look at in this video. So let's jump into the demo and check it out. All right, everybody, we are at the demo here. And as you can see, I do just have a main.go file. Uh, it's in this Golang Azure. If you wanna hit my GitHub, you can find all this code in my GitHub. So the first thing that we're gonna do, of course, is we're gonna use package main. This is just our main package. We're not importing it from anywhere. We're not using any separate packages, so package main is perfectly fine. The next thing we're gonna have is our imports. So we have a few different imports here, and we're gonna be using context, FMT, log, and OS. Now these are all standard, not third-party packages, they're all standard packages that are built into the Go language, but we do have three third-party packages. The first is going to be so we can use the billing SDK. Now you guessed it, we're actually gonna be automating collecting some invoice dates with Go. Now I know this probably doesn't sound that fun, but just hang out through the video. I promise you that you'll learn about Go and you'll also learn about how to automate the boring stuff with Go. So we do have the auto rest and the auto rest Azure auth. And what these are gonna do is these packages are gonna allow us to authenticate to Azure. So then the next thing is we have our main function. Uh, actually, before we do the main function, let's do some sub functions first, and then the main function is going to make way more sense. So the first function we have here is Azure Auth. Now Azure Auth is going to use the auto authorizer type. Now we're going to specify a variable here, and this variable is going to contain auth dot and then a function, so the new authorizer from Clyde. Now this is really, really cool. If you have Azure Cly installed, you can actually authenticate via Azure Cly with Go, which is awesome. And then we have some error handling here and then we return the auth. The next is the actual whole function that we'll be using to collect some billing information. I'm gonna paste this in here and we have our get invoice date. Now our get invoice date function, it it returns, or I'm sorry, it takes two arguments or two parameters, sub ID, which is a string, and invoice name, which is a string. So we're gonna be passing in at runtime our subscription ID and the invoice name that we wanna use. So I have a few different edge cases here that I'm testing for. So if sub ID is null, we pretty much tell the program you know, to let us know to please add in a subscription ID. And then the same thing with invoice name, if invoice name is null, please add in an invoice name. And the sysargs will also help us with this too in terms of error handling, but you know, edge cases and trust no one mentality when it comes to code or when it comes to testing code, that's exactly what we're doing right here. And then we have our invoice client. So we're initializing the new invoices client. Now, this is something that's a little bit odd because as you can see, I'm passing in two parameters or two arguments but it's sub ID and sub ID, the same sub ID. Now I'm not sure why, but we go to the type definition. Once this loads up here, sometimes accessing the type definitions are a little bit weird on my Windows machine for some reason. Uh, it's like it's just kind of thinking and it's not going. But anyways, we essentially what happens is this, uh, this new invoices client, I'm just going to get rid of this and see if this pops up here. 
So this should yell at me. Yeah, you know, my IntelliSense just it's not working properly on this machine. I apologize. So essentially the new invoices client, it asks for two parameters, two arguments, sub ID and sub ID one. Not sure why, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't just let us pass in one sub ID. You know what? I'm curious if we can do this, if we could just pass in nil. I actually haven't tested this, so this, this just came to me as I was uh, explaining it. So we'll try this. And then we have an if statement here, and it says, you know, if Azure auth equals nil, we say no Azure ID or no Azure client auth protected. So this is obvious, like this is something that we need because if no Azure CLI is detected, then this program should fail because we're authenticating via the Azure CLI. So when I have a panic in here now, there's pros and cons to using panics. Uh, a lot of people say not to use panics, but I use panics in very, very like, it's gotta be a really serious condition where I'm using panic. So in this case, like I'm using a panic because I can't authenticate, so I think it should panic. I think it should just completely shut down the program. If you can't authenticate, there's no reason to move forward. So, and then we have the invoices client authorizer, and we give that the property value of Azure Auth, which is, of course, our function to authenticate. And then we have a get by ID variable that also has a, an error variable, and we do the invoice client get by ID. We have this context now. You do need to pass in a context. This get by ID requires a context. And then you also need to pass an invoice name. And then you have this error or this if statement here. And it's like, you know, if error not equal nil, it's going to print out an error else. You're going to get get by ID invoice state. And as you can see, we have this pointer here because we want to be able to bring back the value and not the network address. And with that, let's actually go ahead and try this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do az account go so I can get my uh, my account ID. Then another thing that I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go to my Azure portal here and I'm going to get an invoice ID or an invoice name. So I'm going to go to billing, for example, and let's go to invoices and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick this random invoice here. Minimize that. Okay. So we're going to be doing go run main. Oop, actually, duh. Let me CD into billing. All right. Go run main.go. So the first thing we need to pass in is the subscription ID. I'm just going to pass in the subscription ID. Right, and then I'm going to take my invoice name, pass it in. Okay, then we're going to run it. Main.go, can't find the file specified. Oh, sorry about that. There's another layer. All right, go run. Okay, so we now see that we cannot find the package go UUID in any of these resources. So, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to actually bring in this package. So, I'm just going to copy this go UUID package. We're going to run go get. We're going to go ahead and we're going to bring down this package. Okay. So, now let's try to run this again. All right. So, the nil actually did not work. So we have this error here specifically saying cannot use nil as type string. Okay. So, oh, you know what? Actually, Let's do this. Empty string. See what happens. All right. Now we're going to, now that we know that that doesn't work, we can move on with the function. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our main function Come up here. I'm going to paste this in. So the main function is doing two things. One, it's doing the sub ID for an OS arg and the invoice name for an OS arg. And that's how. When I go like this, I'm passing in these two arguments at runtime, the subscription ID and the invoice name, it's because I'm using OS args. And then we can see here that I'm calling my get invoice state function with the sub ID and the invoice name. And the reason why I'm not calling the Azure auth function is because I don't need to, I'm already calling it inside of the get invoice state function. So now let's try to run this, okay? Function main is undeclared in the main package. Interesting. Let's see what that means. I think it's because 
didn't save. There we go. <laughs> Always save, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and let's run this. Let's see if we get anything back. Cool. So here it is. So I actually got the date back for that invoice. And this is interesting that uh, we just found out something new here. And again, this was the first time that I ever tested it. But where is that code? Ah, right here. So it does ask you to pass in two strings for sub ID one and sub ID two. But if you pass in an empty string, if you don't have two subscription IDs, which again, I don't know why it it wants two subscription IDs. I'm really not sure. Um, that's a question for the SDK, of course. Maybe I'll do a little bit of research and let everybody know. But yeah, so we can definitely pass in that empty string here. And with that, that's how you can start to automate a few different things using Azure. So for example, we can bring back that invoice date. Maybe finance needs that invoice date or your IT manager or your or your infrastructure manager, whoever needs that invoice date for something specific, maybe for their records. And instead of having to go into the Azure portal and do everything manually, you can simply automate it. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time.